Good Monday morning. Whoa, hey look guys, at that. thanks for how about that over the years? Uh, Dog Nation Daily. You see some of the early iterations of it there. Today we sit here in the studio and get ready to talk to you for the one thousandth time. And boy, I tell you what, I, I'm excited about that. And for those of you who've been with us for a long time, or a little bit of time, or whatever in between. Uh, my heartfelt gratitude goes out to you for making this, for me, so much fun every day. And hopefully we'll deliver a fun show for you today as well. We'll talk to uh, John Stinchcomb later on, the uh, former Georgia legend. He'll give his thoughts about the Georgia practices that have started. We'll deal with some recruiting stuff off the top of the program. A lot of rumors out there. I don't know what any of it means, but we'll try to figure it out the same way we have for the thousand times previous to this. Either way, we're just really glad you're with us. It's Dog Nation Daily, the daily podcast for Georgia Bulldogs fans for the 1,000th time begins right now. Presented by DogNation.com, this is Dog Nation Daily, the daily podcast for Georgia Bulldogs fans. Here's your host, Brandon Adams. If you're watching a video, you see a nice little uh, a graphics package that our team put together to uh, honor Dog Nation Daily in its 1,000th episode. If you're listening to podcast radio, you obviously didn't see that. A huge thanks to uh, Michael Carvel and Connor Riley and BJ uh, Sweeney and everybody else who makes all that kind of stuff possible. We are doing this for the 1,000th time today, and I've got a, a little bit bigger thank you for uh, some of you a little later on in the program that we'll get to. But let me, let me deal with some real news, not self-indulgent news, but some real news off the top of the program because you know one of the things that we've always done this program and seemingly we've done this 10 million times although i guess numerically it's just a thousand is try to uh, roll up our sleeves and wrestle with whatever the big recruiting rumor of the day might be because let's face it you know the rumor mill outweighs the actual facts and and news by about uh, a magnitude of a thousand seemingly and today to start off this week no different we'll get into the start of practices here in a moment and welcome in john stinchcomb to the program but let me kind of wrestle with this just for a minute did y'all see, I'm presuming that many of you did, that a a subject of much conversation here on our program for quite some time. Uh, Tank Bixby, the four-star running back, at least based on the composite from the 24-7 sports uh, composite ranking, has made a bit of an announcement. Let me show you this on Twitter, what uh, Mr. Bixby has said here, that he's committing on the 9th. That's this Friday, 6.30 p.m. on one of the local television stations here in Atlanta. Now, immediately, uh, there is going to be a lot of questions from Georgia fans about what all of this means. For some time, it was thought that maybe Georgia and Bixby were trending in the same direction. Then you had the situation two weekends ago where Bixby was elsewhere. He was at Auburn reportedly, and we know for a fact that in his place at Georgia, or at least what seemed to be in his place at Georgia, was the five-star running back Zach Evans. Does this mean then, with Bixby apparently visiting Auburn last weekend, Evans coming in, does this announcement then suggest – and I don't know how you want to chronicle this. You want to call it good news for Georgia because this likely means that Bigsby's going somewhere else, which makes it more likely that Georgia's going to get Zachary Evans. There is a pocket of our audience, and we talk to these folks every day, whether it be on the Dog Nation forum and our comment sections on Dog Nation Daily or just on Twitter at Dog Nation Daily, who will tell you that they take it as bad news if Bigsby goes somewhere else because they like the idea of maybe the more attainable recruiting win or they just like who Bigsby is as a player. But there's going to be plenty of discussion of the fact that Bigsby is now ready to make his commitment. His last visit apparently was to somewhere else other than Georgia. Does that mean that Bigsby is not coming to UGA? Obviously, I don't know, but a good portion of this week will be us trying to figure that out. And, of course, Dog Nation's recruiting insider Jeff Sintel will be a lot involved in that, whether it be in the forum or tomorrow as a part of Dog Nation Daily for our Marlowe's Tavern Insider Update or Wednesday for Before the Hedges presented by Kroger. To make matters more interesting, you've also got this flurry of tweets that comes in from UGA commits that would certainly seem to be of the cryptic variety. Let me start with Kendall Milton, probably the most cryptic of all, especially given what we know from Milton in the past. He tweets out this weekend, I'm just going to say, thank me later. Obviously, uh, Milton would seem to be referencing something involved with the 2020 recruiting class. And while I have no idea if Milton's tweet is in any way connected to Tank Bigsby's tweet, there are going to be a lot of people who assume that it is or at least question whether or not it might be. And Milton himself has certainly contributed to that discussion. Let me go back to last week. 
when Milton right here on the Dog Nation video channels in a commitment video published and produced by our Dog Nation video team, when he made his announcement from Georgia in the aftermath of that, he was kind of talking about what's next. And in that discussion, the two names that we mentioned, Zachary Evans and Tank Bigsby, uh, Kendall Milton made it pretty clear that, that he's interested in having at least one of those two guys join him at UGA. Here is what Milton said then. I plan on playing with another great back, so going after Zach, going after Tank, trying to put, put together this all-star team to make the competition a little bit easier. Now, what we like to do in situations like that is let's listen closely into Milton's words or any recruits like this. Let's see if somehow they give us some sort of indication of which of these two backs you may be leaning towards. Is it Bigsby the more likely gift for George? Is it Zachary Evans, the five-star, uh, that George is in the better position for? And Milton, I guess to his credit, depending on how much you value keeping cards close to the vest, remember at that time, he didn't really give you a strong indication one way or, or another. Here is what Milton kind of said about both those guys, really almost speaking of them in equal measure. Do you remember this? What's best for me might not be best for Tank or best for Zach. So at the end of the day, whatever is their best decision, wherever God wants them to be, then they should take that opportunity. But if that's Georgia, then both of them, both Tank and Zach, they both have similar running styles, both built back. So playing with one of those backs, it wouldn't be a sort of, drop off for when we're playing together it kind of be just a one-two punch type of thing so he clearly wants one of those two guys and on friday we're apparently going to find out what bigsby's choice is and at least gosh it seems am i wrong to say more likely than not that bigsby doesn't choose georgia just based on the conversation that's been out there as of late um and with with maybe georgia in the mix for zachary evans that may be the news that some georgia fans want to hear this is all a very confusing uh topic and a very deep and thickening plot within the rumor mill of all of this to make matters maybe more interesting you've got chad Lindbergh. Another recent Georgia commit, in fact, the commit to Georgia right before Milton made his commitment, he was also relatively cryptic on social media over the weekend. Here's what Lindbergh, the UGA commit, says, y'all aren't ready. Now, Georgia fans were born ready, so obviously that's Milton being, I mean, I should say that's Lindbergh being figurative in his language there. But once again, it's the question of what does it all mean? Is this Lindbergh, the offensive lineman, possibly talking about another offensive lineman? Or is this Mil is this Lindbergh, the resident of suburban Houston, kind of also uh, referencing uh, as Zachary Evans, who plays his high school football not all that far from where uh, Lindbergh plays his? One more tweet from a UGA commit on this. It is another offensive lineman, and this one was a little bit more of the uh, Kirby Smart variety, taking a page out of the coach's book. Really uh, not a whole lot of... Uh, you know, facts and specifics in this, but Tate Rattledge is also kind of busy on social media here this weekend too. Uh, he gives you the go dogs. Now we've come to expect, and also kind of a kind of a, I guess a a face of shock there. We've come to expect when Kirby Smart tweets out go dogs that a commitment has either happened or a commitment is imminent. In this case, does Tate Rattledge kind of mean the same thing here? Georgia fans will be left to kind of wrestle with all of this. One thing to remind you though, when it comes to Rattledge is that of the Georgia commits for this class of 2020, he is among the most plugged into what's going on because he has, since the moment that he committed right here on the Dog Nation video channels, uh, he has seemingly been pretty effective as a recruiter for Georgia and someone that Sam Pittman and the Georgia coaches intend to use in that role. In fact, do you remember after he pledged to the Dogs here on the Dog Nation video channels, when he talked to Jeff Sintel, he made it pretty clear who he was going after and what he expected to have happen with that 2020 class. So Keep this comment in mind when you see that tweet from Ratledge. Here he is in his own words. What does the class of 2020 now need for the University of Georgia? Who are you looking for? Are you going to start recruiting guys like Carson and everybody else were? We are. Coach Pepin says he's going to send me a list of names. Bron, that Bron kid. We're going to try to get him. I'm going to stay on him from now on. So, Which kid one more time? Um, Bron. Bron. What's his first name? Josh Bron? Joshua Bron. Joshua Bron. Yep. Big guy. And then Kendall Milton. Fun? So listen, he says, you know, who's that Braun kid down in Florida? We're going to go after him. Well, sure enough, a few days later, that's exactly what happened. Uh, Josh Braun committed to Georgia. So Ratledge seems to be kind of uh, very much in the know about what's going on. And if he's tweeting things like this, seemingly he knows something. Now, Georgia fans want to know, well, what is it that he knows? What is it that Lindbergh knows? What is it that uh, Kendall Milton thinks that he knows as well? This could seemingly be one of three things. Maybe the Bigsby news is going to end up being uh, good for Georgia on Friday. That seems the least likely scenario of that for me right now. 
Maybe they feel good about Zachary Evans in a way that's not uh, known based on publicly available information. That would certainly be an eye-popping dynamic change to all of this. Or maybe it's just another recruiting uh, win from someone maybe a little less unexpected to counterbalance what might happen with the uh, Bigsby News on Friday. Could it be a Cedric Von Prahn or somebody like that? It is difficult to know exactly what all of this is, but seemingly something is up. We know that things were going to pick up in terms of a pace for Georgia once Kendall Milton made his commitment announcement on Monday. That seems to be happening now. Someone would seem to be about to follow in those footsteps, and I guess we'll all have to wait to find out exactly who that player is. My name is Brandon Adams, and this is Dog Nation Daily, the daily podcast for Georgia Bulldogs fans. Hello to you, and thanks for being with us. Live on video today, 10 a.m., Dog Nation Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. We're on the radio at noon on Athens Sports Radio 960 The Ref, and we're available as a podcast wherever you find them and find them. And just really be ha- happy to be here in our studio for the 1,000th time here today doing Dog Nation Daily. And what a fun ride that's been for me over the years. Huge thanks to everybody who kind of gave us a little bit of a flashback to some of that kind of stuff off the top, whether it be uh, some of the video clips that aired a little earlier or the nice graphic that's in place behind me. Uh, our team here has uh, been nothing but first class for me throughout the years, and that continues to be true here today. We'll do a little bit more on this kind of later on. But let me for a moment, though, say thank you for something else. You know, on Friday, we did Dog Nation Daily, presented by Kroger, live from Brasstown Valley Resort and Spa. And that was the culmination of our Dog Nation Days of Summer event, the final event of uh, that series of events. And I got to tell you, you are talking about going out with a bang. For all of you that traveled over, for those of you that stayed over the night with us on Thursday, played golf with us on Friday, maybe you just drove over to be a part of the event that evening at 6 p.m., the great former Georgia Bulldog uh, Scott Werner and kind of everything else in- included, I just thought it was one of the proud days for me as being associated with Dog Nation to be able to have that much fun with so many of you in such a just a first-class way. Brasstown Valley Resort and Spa really rolling out the red carpet treatment. It was it was incredible. And so I wanted to send a quick, huge thanks to all of you for making that possible. Now, many of you also say, well, B.A., you know, I've heard the good times there at uh, Brasstown Valley Resort and Spa and all the events of Dog Nation Days of Summer, and I missed out on that. I want to come be a part of a Dog Nation event. The really good news is, and y'all stay tuned this week because I'm going to have a lot more details on this. Coming up this month, really just a couple of weeks from now, we've got our big Dog Nation season kickoff event with one of our great uh, sponsors, uh, partners. This is going to be an incredible, incredible time. It's going to be the perfect way to start the upcoming season in style. So if you've never been to a Dog Nation event before or if you try to come anytime we're out and about in the public, this is one you're not going to want to miss. So stay tuned here this week, and I'll give you a whole lot more details about that. All right, we'll get John Stinchcomb coming up in just a moment here today on Dog Nation Daily. Let me also uh, do uh, this just for a moment. There was kind of an interesting conversation that went on Friday when Georgia kicked off the start of its 2019 summer practices with Georgia quarterback Jake Fromm. And obviously, he's got a lot of cameras in his face, a lot of microphones in his face. There's a lot of discussion about what Fromm will do in his junior season, which could be his final junior se- final season in a Georgia uniform. And the one thing that seems to be pretty top of mind for Fromm right now is the ways in which he wants to get better. The theme of improvement, whether it be leadership or on field, is something Fromm talked an awful lot about. In fact, let me give you just a little brief taste of this right now from Jake himself. I mean, I want to I get better on offense. I want to get better for me personally as a, as a football player, and, and I want to make this team the, the best team I can make it in, in these days of camp. So obviously he talks there about his desire to improve, but sometimes it becomes a source of curiosity of what exactly does that mean? How are the ways in which, Jake, you do want to get better this season? Well, you didn't hear that in that clip, but our our, our, uh, practice insider Mike Griffith was able to get another quote from Fromm where he went into a little bit more detail about the kind of improvement he wants to see. Uh, Fromm told Griffith that there are some details in the play-action run game, in the run game, in the pass game. What can I do around the pocket? How can I be quicker twitch and be able to uh, make throws, whether it's off balance or on the run or in the pocket? How can I, uh, how can I go out there and, and get better in that regard? That's specifically some of the ways in which he wants to get better, and I find that to be really interesting. And uh, what is uh, you know, also pretty interesting about that is, is how well that coincides with, um, 
with a, you know another clip that you've heard us talk about on Dog Nation Daily before. Do you remember going back to February when we were at the uh, Super Bowl media day and we ran into Trent Dilfer, the former Super Bowl winning quarterback, and we talked to Dilfer then about how he wanted to see Fromm improve. And the reason why Dilfer's opinion on this matters is because Dilfer was the head coach of the Elite 11. He knows the quarterback prospects as well as any probably guy in the country knows them personally. He knows their games like the back of his hand. And that level of athleticism is the thing that he wanted to see Fromm improve on. And he said that at this stage of development, Fromm still can't improve on that. It's really interesting to me to hear Dilfer, who evaluates all quarterbacks, kind of calling for something specific from Jake and have Jake, when he meets with the media on Friday, essentially echo a good bit of what of what Dilfer has said he wants him to do clearly means that that Fromm's not only committed to being the best but he's also committed to getting top flight uh coaching from 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 other sources and it seems like right now they're all on the same page and watching that growth and development from 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 Fromm this year I think should be a really interesting thing and we'll have more on that throughout the week here on Dog Nation Daily for now though before I bring on our buddy John Stinchcomb let me take a moment to also tell you about a really fun thing that's coming up with the Atlanta Braves here this weekend uh The Atlanta Braves legends are returning home uh, August 16th to the 18th for an alumni weekend at SunTrust Park. Now, this is always one of the most fun things that happens at SunTrust Park every single year. Much the same way you love the current crop of Atlanta Braves and how much fun they've been to watch this year. Well, those uh, Braves legends are also really fun, too. And there's a few big things going on this weekend. There's the uh, Friday night Braves legends parade and red carpet introduction. There's even a special way for you to get close to those guys during that special introduction. It's going to be a lot of fun. You can also get to the ballpark early on Saturday night. The alumni are going to be doing some autographs throughout SunTrust Park, and there's going to be an alumni softball home run derby starting at 6 p.m. That's going to be incredibly fun as well. And then on Sunday, you can head to the warning track. Actually stand on the SunTrust Park warning track for a photo on the field with some of those Braves alumni there. It's just going to be an incredible weekend. Braves are in a huge pennant race right now, making some big moves to chase down the World Series, and we'll celebrate that and the Braves legends on alumni weekend uh, coming up August 16th to the 18th. So for more information on everything going on that weekend, how you can get your seats reserved to be a part of it, here's a website I want you to go to. It's braves.com slash alumni weekend. Once again, the website for those of you listening, podcast or radio, braves.com slash alumni weekend. Atlanta Braves baseball, chop on. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. I think that's going to be a ton of fun. It's great to have you with us here today on Dog Nation Daily for the 1,000th time. Really appreciate that, and I think you will enjoy our buddy John Stinchcomb right now. And we'll get John coming up here in uh, just a moment. He'll be ready to rock and roll with us, and uh, we'll have a fun conversation with him. There's a lot I want to get into with uh, John here coming up, so we'll, we'll do that on on the start of Georgia practices, on kind of you know what it feels like to uh, to be in that moment, kind of what he expects from this team uh, this year. I have also got a really fun uh, preview series that begins today that John was good enough to contribute with us on. on. I'll give you a little bit of a taste and a uh, preview of that. Sounds like John's ready, so let's roll on. And uh, as I said before, it's good to have you with us here on Dog Nation Daily. So glad to be here. One stop. From Athens and across the SEC or wherever the recruiting trail may lead, here's a DogNation.com insider. I think I may have drawn John off sides on that. John, uh, welcome to our program. Really appreciate you being a part of uh, Dog Nation Daily here today. Hope you're doing well. Uh, well, I need to get your snap count down. I mean, you're, you're a young player. I just got to get on your page. Any, any pro who's done it a thousand times, you got a rookie come along. You know, I think I gave I, I think I gave you a hard count on that one, but nonetheless, I am uh, I'm really glad to have you with us, and obviously uh, a, a terrific guest to celebrate our one one thousandth episode with, and. Uh, for a lot of these Georgia fans, John, you know how it is that they have been with us for that full ride, and they're hoping that 2019 is not only the best year yet for us doing this coverage, but also for Georgia on the field there as well. And the start of that uh, is obviously what happens during practice, and Georgia got some good news, although not of the unexpected variety when Kirby Smart made it clear on Friday that Zamir White is clear and able to practice, and there's a lot of news, there's a lot of things will be wrestled with and figured out over the course of the next few weeks, but to be able to kind of go ahead and check off this box, that at least for now, as much as can be expected of anyone, Zamir White, the nation's f- former number one running back for the class of 2018, on the heels of two knee injuries, is now ready to be a football player in good standing alongside everybody else in this roster. Uh, John, I think the average Georgia fan takes that as pretty good news, and I'm sure you probably feel much the same way. Well, I just 
pray that he stays that way. Uh, he's he's obviously a talent and can help the that entire offense just offset some of the load for DeAndre. And I mean, you've got other horses in the stable, but there's a reason why he was the number one running back coming out of high school. You just hope that he can return to that form and uh, stay healthy because he can really be a, a big time boost for this offense. And John, I think. For all of us who like sports, whether you follow college football most closely or I was mentioning the Atlanta Braves before, you, you, you pay attention to the Braves. When it comes to a young prospect that you haven't seen yet, there's always going to be kind of a combination of curiosity about what he will be like, but maybe also a level of skepticism because certain guys like me who do this for a living have a tendency to hype everything a little too much, and there's an assumption sometimes that maybe Zamir is going to be hyped up too much. But, John, let me be very clear about one thing. My opinions that I've expressed on Zamir White are not based on my own ability to scout you know, who's a player and who's not because I don't trust my own abilities on that. And I'm, you know, frankly, not always all that interested in anyone's individual scouting report. But I have talked to enough people collectively, either that have seen him practice before he got hurt last year in 2018, saw what he was able to do in a limited capacity this you know, past spring, people who, who do know more, more about the sport than I do, who have watched him you know, more closely and more concentrated uh, than I've been able to. And you hear kind of a universal sense of, yes, this is a player that fans want to be excited about. We heard that from some of the Georgia guys on, on Friday when they uh, spoke as a part of the kickoff to all of this season's worth of practice and everything like that. You know, sometimes it can be difficult to know what an unknown commodity brings to the table. But there are whispers around why, and I do think that the optimism that would exist for fans about him, I think it's justified based on the things that, that, that people have told us from having seen glimpses of him along the way. Uh, I couldn't agree more. And I think running back's one of those positions where a young guy can step in and step up pretty early. Uh, your biggest concern is how do they do in, in non-carrying the ball situation? How do they do in pass pro? How can they do... Um, out in routes and, and trying to draw linebackers out of the space that they're covering. So <clears throat> what I like about Zamir is, is everything you read, uh, that, was, that was a highlight for him. Like He looked forward to run blocking. I, I remember when he was getting recruited, you talked to the head coach, and um, that was one of the first things he talked about, a guy who was you know, breaking records with touchdowns and yards carried one of the first things he brings up is how he uh, is, is a student of the game and, and likes to protect the passer. That's, that's a highlight for me. I mean, that, that's something you circle and you underline and say, that's how guys win opportunities early to get on the field. And uh, like you say, I, I haven't seen a lot of this. I, I've seen his highlight reel, and there's a lot of highlight reels that look good, but it seems to stand out a little more than others, just the way he can run. Uh, with balance and power, and and hit the seams when he uh, when he finds them, and you know I think there is a very legit reason why uh, those that continue to watch high school athletes across this country, like Centel, that they continue to endorse him and say, just wait, just wait, yeah. and once you lay eyes on him, uh, you'll see what we've seen all along. So uh, I think that's really well said. And one of the things that Kirby Smart talked about on practice before, when, during his press conference on Friday was that his attempt to use these things to instill a sense of effort and a sense of toughness in his team. And that's obviously been a hallmark of the Kirby Smart era thus far. But as a former player yourself, at both you know the, the successful level at Georgia, the NFL level beyond that, how do you draw that straight line from – hey, I want a tough football team on Saturdays. I want a team that shows maximum effort on Saturdays. How do you draw that line from that to what happens during practice? How does one impact the other? Oh, well, it, it all starts, uh, you know, in, in the college ranks between Saturdays and Fridays of, of how you prepare. And you set a tempo. I mean, uh, the box, the, the guys on the offensive line, defensive line, linebackers, they set a tempo for the entire team. And when it's physical and practice and you're getting after folks, um, I always felt like that, that leads to success. Teams I was on, teams you watch play, um, I've, sadly, I've sat through a number of practices, and they get long and they get boring. Um, but you can tell what a team's about. And you create an identity of, of being physical. It sets a tone. And 
and that usually translates to game days, and um, there's no better time to start than now. And I think that's what Kirby continues to push is every t- every opponent we face, every team that lines up against the red and black, we need them to feel us. And, and they're built that way, quite honestly. You look at the offensive and defensive lines, um, you've got big physical folks that are that are ready to impose their will um and and that's the way they're designed to do it yeah i think that's exactly right and is it the same thing when it comes to you know kirby also talked about conditioning and and discipline obviously georgia even though it has an indoor practice facility it practices a good bit outside in the heat and obviously players are asked to keep up with a lot of responsibilities during practice where the precision with which you do a drill matters it's not just how hard you try but it's how effectively you carry out the assigned task in the given moment is that also a a translation of you don't want you know dumb penalties you don't want to get tired in the fourth quarter i mean you know does that get impacted by what's happening right now i'm assuming that it does but i'm curious to uh to which to how much of a degree and i i obviously you would know that well it's the x factor and and everybody looks good when they're fresh and they're 100 percent. it's when you're dog tired that uh you're more prone to mistakes and you know what was the the mantra all off season do more mm-hmm. uh, so so these guys have been pressed and and they're preparing for those moments of weakness when you're tired and you know things are cramping, you don't feel great, and you've got bumps and bruises here and there, and you're uh, those are just boil down to distractions, things that get you off your focus. I think everybody who's uh, of of high caliber can get out there and perform when when the situations are isolated to a silo. Well, you don't get to play in a silo. Mm-hmm. You have to play when when you're tired and it's fourth quarter and you're on your 13th play in a drive and uh, they bring in a fresh pair of legs across from you and you've got three plays coming out of the huddle and looking for, you know, is it, are they playing single high or two shell and uh, what's the k- kill? All those things matter. Yeah. And it's, it certainly is easy when you're, you're doing it once, but uh, when you get tired and there's plenty of distractions that get you off your game, you got to be mentally tough, and I, I think that started a long before now, but you definitely continue to build on that. These dog days of summer, when it's hot and it's brutal and you start to hurt, and, man, that, that, that's when you start getting mentally sharp, too. Yeah, I think that's uh, really well said. On the position of the wide receiver specifically for a moment, that's one of those positions that I think there's maybe as much curiosity from Georgia fans about as really anything. And a couple things over the course of Friday and Saturday I thought were pretty interesting. First of all, Demetrius Robertson, according to the reports that you read at DogNation.com, you know, kind of you know running first to the extent that matters at all in that slot receiver position, which see which seemed to leave you to believe that some of the stuff we thought we heard from D. Rob during the spring truly was true and accurate that he really might be in a position in year two in this Georgia uniform to capitalize on his talent and be a bigger part of the offense here. There's also just the overall buzz around George Pickens, whether it be some of the photos that I saw where. He looks to be in incredible physical condition. Now, he's never been the fastest receiver. Uh, those that follow this on the recruiting trail will know that. His 40 times haven't always been eye-popping numbers necessarily, but he's fast enough probably, and he's bigger by a long shot than the average uh, guy for sure. This is a pretty interesting crop of uh, receivers here, John. Not the same kind of experience that you'd like to have in terms of, well, so-and-so has been in the program for three years. Really, only Tyler Simmons can say that. But between Cager, who's played some at Miami, uh, Robertson, who played some at Cal, Blaylock and uh, uh, Pickens, who are uh, pretty impressive incoming freshmen, Karis Jackson, who's been in the program waiting for his time to shine. This is kind of an interesting group, and I guess I'm curious from you in terms of what can they do this summer to be more ready to play once it all uh, comes to pass here this season? Obviously, they've been repping with Fromm when possible during the summer, uh, you know, prior to the start of practice. But what's the next couple of weeks going to be like for them, you think? Well, it's got to be consistency and reliability. Uh, can you get lined up? Can we trust you when uh, you're supposed to run a six-yard dig? That, that, that's what you're hitting. Um, that you, you can read coverages and make the adjustments and be in the right spot so that uh, when, when Fromm throws the ball out there to a spot, he can count on you being there. And 
you know, that just it takes time and it takes development. Now, here's the good news is on paper, on paper, you've got some really talented guys that are ready to step up. And, and I've seen the pictures of Pickens, too. I've seen him in person, and, man, he's big and pretty. And yeah. uh, he may not be the fastest, but uh, neither was Marcus Colston. And he turned out to be pretty good for the Saints. Great and, point. You know, it kind of kind of reminds me of Javon Wims. That guy would catch anything you throw close to him. He found a way to catch it. So, you know, wide receivers, yes. Does blazing speed help? Yeah, it sure does. But there's plenty out there that have found uh, some a great level of success that weren't straight burners. There's a reason why. Now, Olympic track stars don't automatically translate into the world's best wide receivers. You have to, there's a lot more to the position than just running fast. Let me finish up with this. I'm really excited about later on this afternoon because we're going to unveil the first of a project that you and I work together on. It's our Own the Ease season preview series. It's brought to you by Georgia's Own Credit Union. And, John, this is something we've done for a few years now, and it's uh, fun to have you a part of these this year. Obviously, we know that Georgia fans are ready for a championship. They want a national championship. But as someone who traveled this path yourself, earning a division win, getting the SEC championship game, and winning that game as well, you know full well that the first step towards winning a national championship is is winning your division, qualifying for the SEC championship, and then letting the magic happen after that. We're going to talk over the course of the next few days here at DogNation.com and on Dog Nation Daily about exactly how all of that's going to go down. And our first one of those videos that we're dropping today is our conversation about Jake Fromm and DeAndre Swift and the fact that George is in a unique position. Neither Fromm nor Swift may win the Heisman Trophy, but both are considered Heisman Trophy. I don't want to say favorites in that they are the number one favorites to win the award, but they are certainly listed among the favorites to win that award. And I think that's a great feather for UJ to have in its cap as it tries to own the East once again and a whole lot more here in 2019. For folks who will see this video later on and uh, read my story that goes along with that, would you mind giving us a little bit of preview, your thoughts on Fromm and Swift for this upcoming season, how much fun it is to have these two dynamic offensive weapons playing together once again? Well, you're talking about two of the most uh, dynamic offensive weapons in college football, and there's a reason why they've been identified as potential Heisman candidates. It's because they've, they've shown elite skill for, for both positions. I don't think there's been uh, this much excit- excitement for a quarterback-running back duo in Athens since probably Stafford and Marino, and Georgia came into that season preseason ranked number one, and honestly, there's uh, more talent surrounding the quarterback and running back positions for this team than what we saw uh, heading into that season. So it's it's well earned, and you know I, what what might be the limiting factor, the uh, one thing that the ceiling that prevents either one of those players from getting that title is the amount of talent that um, you'll disperse the ball through. And DeAndre, if he was the lone back. Uh, on, a, on a sole focused running back team, he has a he has a legit chance to be a Heisman Trophy winner at the end of the season. Same thing for Jake Fromm. If you're in a an offense that's relying solely on the quarterback to disperse the ball, make the throws, and and rack up yards with crazy numbers, he's got the talent to do that. Uh, but that's not the way Georgia's set up. It's it's much more of a balanced attack. There's so many more weapons. Um, that, that you can utilize, and that's great for the team, and sometimes that doesn't always translate to individual awards. And, you know, like you say, I hope that's not a, a big spoiler for some of the Own the East <laughs> segments that we've recorded later, but you, we, we hit a little more in-depth into those topics. John, I tell you what, it was so much fun to talk to you about this now and also uh, for the video series that's going to be airing over the course of the next few days here. It's uh, it's a real privilege for us to have you a part of some of this stuff with Dog Nation. We've got some other stuff we're going to be announcing with you uh, later on as well that I'm really excited about. I won't let the cat out of the bag on that as of yet. But uh, just for now, thanks so much for being on this program today, uh, a part of our Own the East series, courtesy of Georgia's Own Credit Union, and a whole lot more to come. John, enjoy your week, and we'll count down these final few days before the start of the season here. Let's go. Go dogs! Can't wait. Thank you, John. 
Let's take a look around the rest of the league. This is SEC Through. Boy, I love having uh, John Stinchcomb as part of uh, Dog Nation Daily and our Own the East video series, courtesy of Georgia's own credit union. This is going to be a lot of fun. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just of the belief that that division is an important step towards winning it all. you got to win that thing. That's the first domino to be toppled. Now you'll say, well, other programs haven't had to do that. Alabama didn't have to do that in 2017. You know, I can't control what has happened to Alabama in the past. I'm going to assume, though, that Georgia's path is likely going to be a little bit different, and I think it's going to be of the more traditional variety, which means dominating the division, made more interesting this year because of the the assumed rise of a program like Florida. Owning the East is going to be a, a, a lot of fun this year, and previewing that as part of our Own the East video series and uh, the, some stories. They've actually, believe it or not, let me write, uh, write a couple things for a dognation.com. We've got that coming up over the course of the day. So, hey, let me get ready to transition to our SEC through. Before that, let me remind you about my friends at Kroger, who've got a great uh, deal going on between now and August 13th. You've got to get in here and, and do this uh, kind of quickly. They've got those wild snow crab clusters. That's not always easy for me to say, but it's very easy for me to consume and enjoy. Wild snow crab clusters. That's almost like a Ron Burgundy, unique New York type thing. Wild snow crab clusters on sale with card. Uh, for just six ninety nine dollars uh, right now through August 13th. So if you haven't signed up for the um, the Kroger Savings Card, you need to do that. You need to get to your local Kroger and take advantage of this. What a great way to say goodbye to the summer. I uh, had a great uh, uh, cookout barbecue. It was actual real barbecue pig uh, on Saturday with some of my neighbors. And if you're getting ready to do some of that same kind of stuff, uh, let me suggest those wild snow crab clusters as a way to enjoy some of that. All right, let me do uh, another recruiting story that does not involve Georgia here for a moment, or at least – Tangentially, it could have involved Georgia. Did y'all see where four-star safety Chris Thompson out of the state of Texas? This is a name that's come up. Jeff has written about him at least once on Before the Hedges, presented by Kroger. Thompson's name comes up from time to time. Well, he actually announced a commitment. I don't know if this is a surprise or not because honest truth is I'm not following every twist and turn of Chris Thompson's recruitment. I guess I was somewhat surprised that he announced Auburn over the weekend. This is a pretty good get for Auburn who, you know, somehow, some way, kind of hangs around and – Always seems to be in the mix for a pretty high caliber of player. I think that's what Thompson is. I think he's a pretty good safety. I think that's a pretty good get. It's the example of the kind of recruiting win, even though Gus Malzahn stands on somewhat shaky ground, uh, that Auburn is still able to get. And, boy, uh, these Texas programs have been raided this year by some of these SEC teams, including what Georgia still might be doing, what others have already done, including Auburn here. Now, you may wonder, where does that leave Georgia then in pursuit of a safety after uh, really collecting some nice safeties and recruiting the last couple of years? Obviously, my first choice in this would be Avante Williams, the current Oregon commit. I don't know if that's realistic or not. I just don't. Uh, I think that he's interested in Georgia, but interested in, to the tune of flipping from Oregon and, and coming to UGA. I'm going to let the experts like Jeff Sintel uh, weigh in on that. Jeff, speaking of him, also mentioned Jaquarius Conley on Wednesday on Before the Hedge was presented by Kroger. I think he's from Jacksonville. The truth is I'm not an expert really uh, on Conley, but that was the other name that came up. I'd love to see Tay Williams in the fold here. That'd be a fun one to watch, and I guess we'll let Jeff tell us if that's realistic or not. I thought over the weekend it was kind of interesting – what went down with the Urban Meyer stuff and the Zach Smith stuff and how Alabama has seemingly gotten mixed up in all of this. So a whole bunch of emails were basically data dumped by Ohio State. I'm sure this is in response to some of those freedom of information requests and things like that. And so you had a lot of media members doing due diligence. This is what a good reporter would do, digging through there and kind of finding out from these emails what's interesting. Well, there were a couple of things that stood out. First of all, you saw Urban Meyer apparently, and I read this kind of third hand, but apparently – was asking if they should put it out there that Alabama had offered Zach Smith, the now former wide receivers coach on the outs, had offered him a job. They also mentioned uh, Greg Schiano and kind of others associated with that program uh, that Alabama had offered a uh, job to. What that shows me is how much coaches obviously understand the value of PR when it comes to recruiting because in the email that Meyer sent, he did mention recruiting as the reason why they would want to do this. That pretty clearly behind the scenes, this gives you an indication of just how much coaches believe the PR is a part of this. That's why Georgia almost always, when it can, announces a commitment very soon after another recruit who they were thought to be in the mix for commits somewhere else. PR just matters when it comes to recruiting, and Meyer seemingly proved that during these emails. The other thing that comes up, and Saban was actually asked about this, um, about offering a job to Zach Smith. Saban says he didn't, says he interviewed him. Interview went well, but they did a background check and decided not to. 
It almost seemed like Saban, though, was prepared for that, which goes to show you as much as coaches like Saban say they don't care about the media and don't like doing this media stuff, don't have time for it, clearly behind the scenes they're spending a lot of time getting ready for it because Saban on the topic of Zach Smith, who has got all kinds of stains on him, going back to what allegedly happened when he was at Ohio State and prior to that at Florida with the domestic abuse and things like that, clearly Saban seemed to have a very careful answer in place, which seemed to mean uh, – he indicate he took some time to get that one ready. So kind of interesting to see the inner workings of big programs like Alabama and Ohio State based on a lot of these emails being released. Uh, one more story I want to get to as part of our SEC through. It happened on Thursday. We didn't really do this on Friday because we were out and about at Brastown Valley Resort and Spa, but the coaches bowl is out. You're not surprised to see Georgia at number three on this list. That's exactly where you thought they would be. I saw where Tom Fornelli at CBS Sports tried to make a case for Oklahoma being ranked ahead of Georgia for whatever reason, but Georgia's going to be ranked number three in this poll, AP poll probably as well. Then you get into the other SEC teams. I think LSU at six, y'all know I feel of the national elite, uh, they are the most underrated. They don't get as much conversation as they deserve. You'd be hard-pressed to find five teams in the country better, more talented than LSU, and I think Alabama's going to find that out come November. You get Florida at number eight. I've told you and made my case a million times. I don't think Florida finishes the season ranked. Top 10 team to start, unranked to finish, and I'm sticking with that. Uh, A&M's at 11, Auburn's at 16. The interesting thing about this, too, is A&M plays, what, four of the top six teams? Auburn plays, is it six of the top 14, if I've done the math correctly on this? Georgia also in a pretty tough schedule situation as well. So the coaches poll, kind of our first official poll to come out, and uh, Georgia looking pretty good where it's ranked, but also that schedule looking a little more tough based on uh, based on where some of these other opponents are being ranked, including September 21st, number nine, Notre Dame. They may even be higher than that by the time that game is played. So the Georgia schedule looking a little tougher on paper will make that your SEC through. And I want to take a minute here on Dog Nation Daily on the event of our 1,000th episode to just say a couple of words of thank you here because here's the one thing, and I'm, I promise you I'm going to try not to make this uh, too self-indulgent because ultimately none of this is really about me. I'm just the guy that's lucky enough to get to sit at this desk, speaking to this microphone, and now in this modern age, looking to you on this uh, video camera. It's, it's really, though, behind the scenes where the real action for Dog Nation Daily takes place, both in terms of getting the show ready and um, dealing with me. Because the one thing that, that you're probably not aware of, when you see me on camera, when you listen to me in a podcast situation, or if you come out and see us for a Dog Nation Days of Summer, Marlowe's, Kroger, something like that, some of the places that we are you know, throughout the year, you know, that's kind of me personality turned on, but the people that are behind the scenes here have to deal with the the version of me when the personality's not quite so turned on, when it's a little more turned off, and that's not always the easiest thing to do. I am not always the easiest person to work with, but the people who have worked with me have made this look easy for a really long time, and I'm incredibly grateful. Michael Carvel, who's sitting with me today, our buddy Connor Riley, who's normally with us today in Athens, getting ready to hear from James Coley and Dan Lanning a little later on. I could not do this show without them every single day. And the producers that came before them, guys like Michael Shalaba and our uh, Hannah Chalker and uh, Jim Scroggs of uh, Vince Fairnot and uh, Mark LeBlanc, who has worked with us in some capacities, you know, some of those people have have made doing this show every day kind of what it is because the technology part of this is lost on me. I would never be able to deliver this show to you all of you the way that I do if it were not for them and I'm incredibly uh, grateful for that uh, you hear me talk sometimes about our buddy BJ Sweeney who kind of helps us keep the train on the tracks here at Dog Nation his support unwavering as it's been commitment to letting us grow and be creative and try things uh, I'm, I'm I'm incredibly grateful for that. James DeGale, who was kind of in that spot, in that role before him, who really kind of coached me up in the early days of doing Dog Nation Daily and encouraged me to make this as big and much fun as I could make it. Um, I, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful for him on a day like this, too. More than anything, though, it's really my family, my wife in particular, who has just kind of stood beside me and, and been a cheerleader every step along the way. I hope all of you get to experience a version of that in your own life, of someone who loves you no matter what and roots for you through the good times and the bad. I, I certainly have that. But as we get ready to uh, wrap up here today and the uh, fight song plays here for the uh, 1,000th time, let me also add to that all of you as well. Whether you've been watching for a little while, listening for a long time, remember back when I was doing this in a closet in my bedroom, or we had the little video clip earlier of 
a different video studio we had for a while that just had like the vinyl backdrop behind it. No matter when you kind of came in on all of this, we appreciate you being a part of it. And I will tell you, you know, I don't know what the next thousand episodes of this show are going to look like. When we first started the podcast, I had never heard of Facebook Live. I didn't, didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, when we did start that on video, the one thing we all agreed on, we'd never be on YouTube. That's just a platform we didn't want to use. And now thousands of people watch us on YouTube each and every day. So for the next 1,000 episodes, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I've never been more committed to delivering it to you each and every day in some form or fashion. And uh, I appreciate you allowing me to bring it to you. And by the way, Gator Hater Updater, how about 1,010 days? We'll see you tomorrow right here on Dog Nation Daily. And on a video, uh, huge thanks. Hey guys, thanks for being with us for the very first ever episode of Dog Nation Daily airing live here on Facebook Live. We're going to have a ton of fun with you today. Hey guys, it's Brandon Adams, the host of Dog Nation Daily, the daily podcast for Georgia Bulldogs fans. Looking forward to two weeks from now, two Saturdays from now, a chance for Georgia to get back on the field against Florida. And how good does that look, by the way? Uh, the Georgia hat on Trayvon Walker, uh, the family and friends there now. That is a face that's all about business, but that Georgia G has never looked better than it does right there on Trayvon Walker. He's, as Georgia gets ready for its team picture here to commemorate their trip to the Rose Bowl for the first time since 1942. Hello, everybody. I'm Brandon Adams. It is hard to believe, but this is actually the final time that we'll come to you here, fly from uh, L.A. at least 2017-2018. Uh, and what a day it is to be coming to you here as Georgia wins the Rose Bowl in thrilling fashion. We are live here at the Hyatt Regency, downtown Atlanta, part of DogNation.com's coverage of the college football playoff national championship game. There's quarterback Jake Fromm with a suit in hand, almost for sure, hanging on the hanger. His red Georgia duffel bag are ready to go here tonight. We're down here on the field, the same field that we have been on before, talking about the same thing we've talked about a year ago. I honestly don't even know what to say. And we'll talk about a few of these right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Where Georgia, for the second year in a row, has beat those lousy, stinking Gators. 36-17, a uh, final here today. Another win in this epic rivalry here for uh, Georgia. And, Jeff, I got to tell you, it feels just as good as I thought that it would, my friend. And look who made it back from Jacksonville. With a big smile on his face, it is Eddie the Blind Squirrel reigning over the estate of Florida here. All of Dog Nation can say that, but have no fear, Gators fans, if you happen to be tuned in. Uh, I think you'll find us to be benevolent dictators here. Oh, we got some breaking news. Let me deal with this here live uh, on our videos. George Pickens, have, what, this is official? This is real. George Pickens has flipped to Georgia. As we're doing this live right now, George Pickens, the five-star wide receiver, we're just finding out about this. George Pickens has flipped to the University of Georgia in what can only be described as a huge surprise. Oh, wow. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Jeff Sintel and everybody else. Uh, got a cake here. Obviously, I love that. Uh, Eddie's on hand for all of this, too, for episode number 1,000. Uh, this is truly a special thing and a total surprise, completely unexpected. Uh, I tell you what, Jeff, this is, uh, this is incredibly nice. And uh, my kids who ought to be in school right now, they're here right now. But uh, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a neat thing to be able to uh, see. Yeah, you kind of get to see a, a look there. And it's so nice to have our salespeople here because, you know, you hear me do the reads during the show. and 
we wouldn't keep to get doing this every day if it wasn't for these people working as hard as they do to make sure the lights stay on around here and the video wall behind me stays lit up and kind of everything else. So, um, so I'm incredibly grateful for all of you for making that possible. And uh, this has been the thrill of my life from a professional standpoint, for sure. A thousand episodes of doing this have just been in- incredible. And uh, I tell you, what, it's really fun to be able to share this with uh, with my kids and my wife and uh, all of you. And I can't wait to uh, open up this uh, cake and uh, just have a good time with it all. Jeff, you got anything you want to say? Fine folks at Kroger, they have baked you a special Dog Nation 1K Day cake. And I'm not sure if it's made with gator tears inside, <laughs> but it might be. Well, listen, that's, in, that's incredibly nice. And obviously, Kroger's been an incredible partner through all of this. And I tell you what, getting a cake is uh, about, as, about as good as I could get. I could see me, and I'm sure my kids are going to want to dive into that and in, uh, enjoy all of that. So um, I'm really overwhelmed by all of this. I did not expect anything like this. Uh, just incredibly overwhelmed by it, but incredibly proud, too. And, uh, you know, Jeff's friendship and all of this has just been fun. The first time we spoke to each other was actually – or very close to the first time we spoke to each other was on air. I really didn't know you at all, never met you until we started working together here at Dog Nation. Uh, but we have, uh, we've, certainly, um, we've certainly seen a lot evolve and change over the years in terms of where this program has been. When we first started talking to UGA Recruiting, they weren't signing a five-star a week the way that they are now. First of all, Brandon, I think I've made about 430 of these, maybe out of the 1,000. But in true uh, Georgia recruiting fashion, I'm just going to say – we ain't done yet, man. That is certainly well said. That is certainly well said. So um, let me bring in some of our audience in on this as well uh, as a part of our R.S. Andrews cool down. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll remind you that we do that each and every day. Um, and we'll take a, a few comments here as well. Uh, Jeffrey Sw- Swafford, thanks for the kind words on that. Um, Dante Rivers says, let's do it again for another thousand one days. I think that's a really good idea. You can tell the difference between my daughter and my son, by the way. My uh, my daughter, she loves the uh, idea of being on the camera for a little bit. Charlie wants to do the show himself, so you can tell how different they are. So uh, just incredibly nice, incredibly thankful here. I'm going to go ahead and sign off for RS Andrews Cooldown today and uh, hang out with some of my friends who've come in here. But for those of you who are a part of this each and every day, we'll look forward to taking a whole lot more of your comments for RS Andrews, who makes this part of the show possible every single day. Y'all do me a favor. Say hello to Darian and the gang over there at rsandrews.com. We will see you back here tomorrow for another episode of Dog Nation Daily. So thanks so much for being with us, and uh, thanks for making my thousandth show certainly the most special of them all. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow right here on Dog Nation Daily.